this video, I'm going to show you how to add a WhatsApp chat sticky button to your website that will show in one of the corners of the website and will always show when users are scrolling. And over here, you can add agents to your chat. Users can click on an agent, type in a message, and then click start chat and WhatsApp will automatically open with that message inside assigned to that specific representative. Without no more further ado, let's get started. Before getting started, you're going to want to make sure that you have Unlimited Elements for Elementor Pro version installed and activated. Inside of the plugin Unlimited Elements, you're going to see the widget library. And over here, you can just search for the word WhatsApp and it will find the WhatsApp widget, WhatsApp chat widget. Hover over the widget, click install, and that will add it to your Elementor widgets pane. Over here inside of Elementor, we're going to add a floating WhatsApp chat widget to this landing page and I'm going to take you over all of the settings and show you exactly how this works and how you can take advantage of it to generate more leads on your website. I mean, this, this tool is really essential. So first of all, you can put it in any section on the page because we're going to position it to a fixed position to be sort of floating in one of the corners on the page so i usually what i usually do is i just add it to the last section but you can actually add it to any section that you want so over here in the widgets pane i'm going to search for what's app chat drag that inside and there we go we have a what's app button on our website now if you want to make this button floating meaning that even when a user scrolls down or up, it will still show. What you're going to need to do is take advantage of the advanced settings that come inside of Elementor. And actually, you can do this to any element, not just this specific widget. But right now, it makes sense because we want this to be a floating button. So going into advanced positioning, and we're going to change a couple of things here. First of all, the width I'm going to change to inline auto and the position I'm going to change to fixed. Now you can see it snapped to the top left over here. I'm going to snap it to the right side and to the bottom. Over here we can tell the distance that we want from the left side. So I'm going to go for 30 pixels and 30 pixels from the bottom. Now that's perfectly placed. And when we scroll up and down in our website, you can see that uh, this button shows up and it's always sticky. This is called fixed positioning. And again, once again, you can do this to any type of element or widget inside of Elementor. So I'm going to click on the widget to edit. And right now we can see the default view of this widget. So first of all, let's go and see what kind of types we have over here. So the type we have is send button with message. So that means that when you click on the button, it's going to open sort of a text area that users can type in a message and then click start chat. That will directly open the WhatsApp chat with this message and put it inside. So the next part is for placement. Now, this depends where you decide to place the button. And what this affects is how this pop-up opens up. So if I would move it to the top right side, then I would set this to top right. So this is really important to set the placement depending on how you fixed positioned it inside of Elementor. As of to types, there are a couple more types. There's only a button with no pop-up window like this one. So 
If I change that to only button, when users will click on it, it won't open that pop-up and will directly open the WhatsApp chat. The next option is for agents. Let's look how that looks. So I'm going to click it over here and you can see that we have agents inside of here. So you can set up as many agents as you want. For example, if you have different departments inside of your business, let's say a support department and sales department, and you want each one of these to be a different representative or different WhatsApp number, then you can determine that. Now, when you click on each one of these, it will directly open his number, his WhatsApp number. And we have another option, agent with message. And this is kind of a mix between the message one and the agents one. So right now, when we're going to click, it's going to open up our agents. And then when we click once again, we have an option to type a specific message with specific placeholders to that direct agent. And you can always close this and go back and then uh, open it again with a different agent. And you can always close this pop-up. So let's continue going over the settings. Intro text. So the intro text is for the text that shows up here. It shows also uh, for the agents type and also for the send button with message type. So you can see that over here. That's the intro text before the main part. So you can set that to whatever you want. The next part is for the phone number. You can set any phone number that you want. Just make sure you're using the country code. For example, my country code is 972. Just make sure that you have your number in this exact format. Next part is for the send button text. So that's the text over here. Start chat. You can change that to whatever text you want. Next part is for open by default. This means that the pop-up will be open once a user visits the page. So sometimes you want this kind of pop-up to be showing up without letting users uh, need the, to click on it. So the users won't need to click on the button to open it up. So that can open it up by default. And you can enable a cache state. What cache does, it means that if a user closes this, the next time he visits the page, then it, it won't need to uh, open up by default. But it, the browser remembers that the user closed this and it won't annoy him each time he visits a different page on your website or something like that. Cache expiry is for how many minutes uh, you want this uh, cache to expire in and then open up again by default and show button label. So we can actually add a label to the button over here. So let's just click on that to see how that looks. So you, you can add some text. Sometimes that's necessary as well. Of course, you can change the text and you can change the direction if you want the icon first or the text first. Let's go into icons and see what type of icons we have over here. So for the icons, we have the main button icon and we have the pop-up icon, which it shows up over here in the title. We have the close icon and we have the icon for the call to action button. So those are the type of icons. Of course, this supports uploading SVGs, but really we did a lot of work on this to make it look perfect by default. So you don't need to change anything. You can just throw it in your website and everything is working. But if you do want to customize it to your needs, you can do that. So show message input. So this is for this part over here. You can uh, turn that on or off if you want to. And this is for the message placeholder. So let's just turn that off just so you can see how that looks when it's turned off. So right now, the user can't type anything and uh, just when we we'll click start chat that will open the chat directly. Awesome. Next part is for the agents. Agents are actually items. You can delete agents. You can add new agents. You can duplicate agents and you can click on an agent to edit it. Let's see what an agent consists of. So let's actually go back to the agents with message mode and go back to our items because we're editing this. 
And let's see. So we're in the first one. It has a title. So the title is actually for the name of the agent. That's the biggest part over here. And you can also add a subtitle. That's usually what, uh, what department he's assigned to, that agent. Of course, you can add an image. So each agent has its own image. Each agent has its own WhatsApp number, a default message, and a placeholder message. So let's look at that. So right now, what we're seeing is the placeholder message. And you can also put in a default message in case there is no placeholder. And available hours is for this part over here, down here. You can just type in what hours the agent is available in. And just so users know that if they're going to leave a message, then maybe if it's not the correct hours, this agent is not going to answer. So let's jump into style. And the first part is for the button, the main button over here. So we can change the size and the inner icon size. Let's just play around with that a little bit. So 80 pixels over here. Let's make the inner icon 30 pixels. And you can see that's really cool. Starting to get nice effect over here. And we can change the radius if we want to, for example, for the button. And really, you can design anything that you want pop-up you can change the width of the pop-up of course this is a res responsive field we didn't go over responsive but let's just change the view over here to be a responsive view and you can see that everything is adapting accordingly we have a different width for the pop-up if i wanted to make it wider let's say 300 pixels i could do that on mobile and everything is looking good Pop-up titles for the title over here. You can see it has a green background, color, intro text. As we said before, that's for the text over here. You can change its typography and anything that you need. And message input is for the input. You can also change that. Everything has, of course, spacing. Send button is for the button for sending the message. You can also adjust that agent you can design how the agents look like all the different settings that you need over here and agent image if you want to make the image bigger or a different radius or anything like that so i hope that was helpful guys and if you have any questions don't hesitate to post them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.